I thought about the fact that I believe God, by His creation of you, by His creation of humankind, He chose to put trust in man. He chose to put trust in you. And I want to explain that. It's not that He put trust in you that He believes you will only make good decisions because the trust in you is is an opportunity he gave to you that he trusts in essence himself because he knows that he has provided the information the evidence that if you investigate it if you find out if you seek it you will believe him you will not just believe that he is which is a start, you do need to believe that, but you will also believe in who he is and what he said and what he's done and the things that he wants you to understand. He is confident in that. He trusts you in that sense and that he made you able to perceive these things. He made you able to comprehend them and to make your own choice he trusts that you will make an informed choice he created the world in such a way and he created you in such a way that you will make a decision that will not be lacking information it will not be without the opportunity to say well I knew what I was doing you may be able to say it in this world now but it will be known at some point. And as I will bring up from time to time here, that is why one of the biggest things we talk about here is the person of our God. And why we see the flaws in, in other systems, religions, doctrines, theologies, denominations, where they don't focus on that because we see that being the root of all understanding the person of who he is so for instance I watch from time to time what they call apologetics videos which is just basically people trying to convince that is believers trying to convince unbelievers and I, when I say unbelievers I don't mean doubters or agnostics I mean people who just flat out say there is no God or there might be a creator, but Jesus is not that one. And he certainly didn't go to the cross for us. So in other words, people that are in a state of denial, they they are in the state of mind that is hatred for their God. They are not seeking their God. I believe that engaging these people exclusively is its own type of rejection of God. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say, try to convince someone who hates God to embrace him. The religious people hated him. He didn't try to convince them to embrace him. He gave them evidence. He still did give them evidence. But he didn't he didn't make it his life's work. His own family rejected him. He didn't occupy his time with trying to get his brothers and sisters to believe him. They already had the information. They made their decision. They thought he was crazy. They could choose to reassess their decision to do that and turn them out anytime they wanted. James is one who did and Jude I suppose but there's nothing in there that says we are to spend our time trying to convince someone who openly rejects our God. I agree in preaching the gospel. I agree in spreading the truth of who our God is and what he's done. I just don't see the point of trying to prove he even exists when that is already done and over with we know he exists the fool has said in his heart there is no God so I am not compelled or commanded in any way to reach out to fools so you can see where that's kind of like an excuse to avoid even getting to know the person of your God at all because if you're occupied with just trying to prove that he even exists, the notion of who he is as an individual can be completely ignored. You can just slap a doctrine on that. Oh, the Trinity. 
And there it is. And you got to believe the Trinity or else you don't believe God. That's my theology. Anyway, you people who don't believe he even exists, well, let me talk to you. And I just see that as futility, as, as vanity, as a waste of time. Maybe for a minute, but once you see that all they are about is rejecting that your God even exists, you go off the rails. You're not doing anything biblical. That's not what Paul did. Paul reached out to people who had different beliefs, who were, yeah, heathens, I suppose, who rejected God, but he didn't go around spending time, significant amounts of time with them. He spent times in the synagogue where there was people who believed in God and they believed in the, the current word of God at that time, the Old Testament canon. But they were not people that just rejected God. And I hope I made my point clear because I really believe that that's what they're doing. They're, they're avoiding the person of God themselves by spending all this time. And I see no real fruit in it other than to produce other people who decide that they believe there is a God and then that's as far as it goes. And they want to evangelize other people and convince them that there is a God. But that's not life with God. It's so much more than that. It is about his person. It is about getting to know someone. There's an actual person here. But if you never get to that, how are you ever going to get to what it's all about, as they say? And that's what we believe it's all about. It's all about him. It's all about getting to know him. Because even if you understand supposedly what he's saying if you don't know who's saying it what's the point there's no point the point of everything is jesus in jesus name amen